Hello, I'm David Domke. I'm chair of the Department of Communication at the University of Washington. Every once in a while, we like to do what we call chats with the chair, uh, an opportunity for me to sit down with a faculty or staff or student uh, colleague just to talk about things that they do, the work that they do. Um, it's a good opportunity for me to learn a little bit more about their work and also for us to share this with others. Um, so today I'm joined with a colleague of mine, Associate Professor Relina Joseph. Uh, thanks, Relina, for coming. Oh, thanks for having me. Sure. Um, and I'm going to ask her a little bit about her research and teaching and then talk about a new initiative that, that we've launched here on this campus. So it's uh, spring of two uh, 2015. You mm -hmm. came in autumn of 2005 yes. to this campus. So when you came here um, and in the last 10 years that you've been here, what is your research and teaching, what, what's the focus of that work? Yeah, so it's gone by in a flash. <laughs> um, so I came here with a PhD in ethnic studies and mm. my work is on race and media uh, generally, but more broadly on thinking about the intersections of race, gender, sexuality, and class uh, in mediated spaces. And so my teaching has looked at issues of power and privilege and difference in communication more broadly. It's looked at uh, race, gender, sexuality in the media. I teach also more specialized classes that look at mixtures and representations of mixtures, in particular hmm. thinking about transgender representations and mixed race representations. And one of my very favorite classes is my Black Cultural Studies class, where I uh, think about how do we center representations of blackness in particular, and what do we make of them in our, in our contemporary moment. So my, my research is also connected to all of those things. Uh, my first book is on mixed race African American representations, and I look at the 10 years uh, leading up to Obama's election and what, was the, what were the, um, the types of representations that we could see of mixed race African Americans in, in, in those times from uh, 1998 to 2008. Mm. And right now I'm writing a book that looks at black women and media representation, and in particular, um, this thing that I'm calling strategic ambiguity. So the ways in which black women um, on television, behind television screens, as media producers are playing with certain types of tropes or resisting negative images. Um, and doing it in all kinds of interesting and sometimes very coded ways. When you use the word representations, mm -hmm. what do you mean? So the representations that I look at are across a wide variety of media. So in, in my first uh, book, I actually looked at um, television, at independent film. I looked at um, novels and memoir as well. Um, for the second book, I'm looking also more at social media spaces. Um, but the reason that I look across a wide variety of representations is what I'm interested in is thinking about what are what are the, the cultural components that we see kind of operating in our world, right, which are going to pop up not just in a particular film or in a particular television show, but across the ways in which we have media represented. So re representation is an image, it's words. What is a representation? Yes, it's an image, it's words. Um, it's often a combination of those things. So it's the visual, it's the sonic, right? It touches um, affect, it touches the emotions as well. Um, it's, it's discourse, it's things that are kind of floating in the air sometimes, mm. the, the very kind of building blocks through which we make meaning of our world around us. Okay. <clears throat> are there, are there, uh, is there a history of, of negative or positive images of, of African Americans in, <laughs> in American kind of popular media? Uh, that's a good question, David. <laughs> um, indeed, yeah, of course, there have been this long history of controlling images. What we talk about are mm. stereotypes or controlling images. That's the, the, the phrase that, um, that Patricia Hill Collins uses, for example, to think about um, Africa, how African Americans have been portrayed in, uh, in not just in negative ways, but in ways that control, right? Mm. In ways that kind of shape um, those, those life chances um, that, that come along with it. So we think about uh, 
Im images representations as really having lots of weight hmm. um, as not just being these things that we consume um, with one part of our brain but that really are um, deeply that were deeply inculcated in um, and that that helped for us to make sense of how we see understand treat people how we hire people hmm. um, all these different things that, that make a difference in how our lives are lived. Okay, and are you, are you particularly interested in television? I'm interested in television because um, that, that's the media that's, that, is, is, that so many of us are consuming constantly. But I'm interested not just in the traditional screen, um, because hmm. so many of us are, are consuming television on, um, on laptops, on mobile devices, hmm. and in tandem with a conversation that might happen on Twitter or a conversation that might happen on a blog. So while the, I'm interested in the kind of the, we talk about the televisual text, but I'm also interested in all of the different ways that audiences interact with that text, um, which is not just about the, the console, right, the old, old school box. Yeah, I, I'm the, when the Grammys occurred, I, there was an online feed where you could watch various mm -hmm. cameras, mm -hmm. right? Like here's the back room, here's the side stage, here's the audience shot, while you could also have the TV on with the, the, right, the one shot the network gave you, right? Right, right, absolutely. And while you could also have your phone open to a Twitter mm -hmm. feed to sure. see what other people were talking about at that particular moment, that maybe you were live tweeting the event or that you were um, maybe looking online to see uh, what particular outfits were worn that night um, to trace those. Yeah, there's all kinds of interactive, interesting things that happen in the interactive media space. Hmm. Okay, um, so in the next couple of weeks, we have a, a big moment here for the work that you've done for some time and for the department and for the University of Washington, the launch of a new center. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So the Center for Communication Difference and Equity, or the CCDE, CCDE. Um, is a really exciting um, space. It's a physical space. It's an intellectual space. It's a community space where we as um, a department and as a university are going to be able to center these issues of power, of privilege, of difference. Um, and, and to think about how we can not only talk frankly about disproportionality in terms of race and gender and sexuality and class and disability, but how we can actually make a difference in changing the way in which um, these experiences are lived and hmm. structure all of our lives. Um, uh, so the, you've been here for 10 years. Has there, has there been something like this at the, the university or around other, other universities? So how, <clears throat> how is this either similar to or different from what, what's been around? Yeah, it's, it's actually a pretty unique venture, which is part of why mm. it's so exciting. Mm. Um, our focus here in communication, we're going to have students and community members and scholars talking about um, not just representation, right, but about kind of interpersonal iterations of difference, right, the way in which we um, talk to and through each other about touchy issues such as race and sexuality. Hmm. Um, there are centers that are more think tanks at some other universities, um, and there are centers that are kind of strictly um, uh, community-based spaces that are mm. tend to not be on universities, but the fact that we're bringing together the research component, the community component, and um, also a leadership development for our students really makes it into a new, unique type of a space, as well as kind of centering it in communication. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> so. Why, why create a center? Why, because you've, you've been doing work in this area for some time. Why 10 years after arriving here, a center? Well, um, uh, you brought the opportunity to me, which is a, a, a tremendous part of it. Um, having a center means that we can actually have um, some longevity for the work that we're doing. That the mentorship that happens of, of students, particularly students who are going in to study issues of difference, um, underrepresented minority students, doesn't just happen as a one-off um, for students that I might mentor, or you might mentor, or a number of our other colleagues um, that could kind of go away with any particular um, faculty member leaving, or that could, um, the, the exciting kinds of um, conversations that we're able to have in classrooms or outside of classrooms, um, 
they might happen all of the time, they might not happen at all. So having actually a center gives us a home, gives us kind of a, a, a commitment to um, having this mentorship continu continue and to grow, of having um, the development of this scholarship on difference that is absolutely so vital in our world right now, um, to have a tremendous home here at the University of Washington, um, and to bring together our, our community. We have a, a, an incredible community of scholars around campus who are doing work on race and gender and sexuality and class, um, some of whom never have the opportunity to talk to mm. each other. Mm. And so we're also endeavoring to be the space of connectivity, to bring together all of the wonderful work that's happening across campus and to help facilitate conversations, um, to grow research projects, to mentor students, um, to help fill our pipeline for scholars who are doing work in race and equity. Um, I've, I'm very excited by this. Uh, maybe we could close here by me asking you a couple questions about students in this in this endeavor students um, who are undergraduates what what will what will be their role in this yeah so we have a couple of different roles for undergraduate students we have um, a, a student undergraduate student club that's called the minority leaders of communication mm -hmm. And that club has been in existence. Um, this is our second year, and we're really kind of taking off. Uh, within that club, students can learn about different opportunities, both here um, during their time at the University of Washington and um, beyond. Um, they can learn about scholarships. They can learn about career opportunities. Mm -hmm. And what they can also do is learn about the importance of engaging community. So our MLC students have been um, engaged in a project with the Rainer Vista Boys and Girls Club all year, mm. have been tutoring and mentoring, um, will be this summer doing some some media work with with um, some of the teens mm. there. So that's one thing. The second thing is we're having this group of um, CCDE fellows. Mm. And the CCDE fellows will be participating in many of those things that the MLC students are doing. They're also going to be paired up with uh, graduate students, faculty, and staff to host office hours in mm. the new CCDE space. And so for those days, for example, when we turn on the television and see um, what's happening in terms of the uprisings in Baltimore, for those moments where we have um, a tremendous amount of rage that we need to direct somewhere positively, that we need to be able to talk about with each other, that we need to figure out what we need to do with, students will be able to go into, undergraduates will be able to go into that space and talk to a fellow undergraduate, a CCDE member, as well as a graduate student and faculty member who's there to have a facilitated conversation about um, the issues that really are, are the most important um, in our world today. So grads, I mean, undergraduates will be doing some of that mentoring. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. That's, that's cool. For You did mention graduate students in there, but is there, Maybe you could talk a little bit about graduate students too sure, in the center. Sure. So um, we have a graduate student group as well. So the mm. undergraduates are the MLC. Um, the graduate group is the Communication Different Research Group, or the CDRG. And so we meet about once a month. And um, that group of students, um, all of whom are working on issues of power and privilege and difference um, and equity and communication, uh, get a chance to check in with each other, to make sure um, that we're kind of collectively keeping everyone um, on track with goals and all of those very important milestones that you need to meet on your way to, um, to receiving your PhD. And they also get a chance to collaborate and to workshop. And so each one of our sessions, one of the, um, one of the graduate students will, will workshop his or her work and um, get feedback from the other, um, the other graduate students. So, you know, we know that, that mentorship in particular is really key to be able to mm. making it through successfully um, any level of academia, um, particularly uh, graduate school where so much of the work is taken on independently. Mm. So this just provides an even kind of a closer community for, for graduate students as they're making their way through our department and into the bigger world. Okay, big question to end. Okay, um, so 10 years from now, what would you hope to, in two or three sentences, to be able to say, that the center is, like this is what the center is? So I think in, in 10 years, if we see the center as, um, as a regional home for hmm. equity, as the place where um, people can come who have questions and get those questions answered, 
Um, I would love to see it really developed robustly where we've had a series of wonderful postdoctoral researchers who have come through and are now having, um, having lives making, um, making their way through tenure track jobs. I would love to see our undergraduates and our graduate students have gone on and to have, have their, their careers really marked by this formative experience in the CCDE. Um, and I would like to be able to say that we've really made a difference um, through our, our engagement here at the University of Washington and in Seattle. Well, this is really exciting. And uh, so you've had a lot of support from campus and community, right? Absolutely. Uh, there are a ton of people who are enthusiastic about this opportunity to come together and work together. We've had support from uh, on-campus um, units from uh, undergraduate education, um, the Graduate School, the Office of Minority Affairs and Diversity, the Carlson Center, and we have faculty affiliates who are across um, the humanities, the social sciences, some members of the hard sciences, as well as Bothell and Tacoma campuses. Wow. And off campus, uh, we've had a tremendous response as well. Um, our primary community partner is the Smiler Rainer Vista Boys and Girls Club, and they've been thrilled to be able to um, be able to connect with us at the UW to make sure that their students are um, seeing the kind of very very tangible pipeline to come here. And our students also um, are learning so much from having the opportunity to connect with um, with teens in the community. Uh, we have a similar relationship with um, the Northwest African American Museum, and um, I think that our number of community partners will continue to grow. I'm really invested in, um, in making sure that our relationships are completely reciprocal so that we're mm -hmm. not taking from them, but that we're, um, we're, we're both kind of giving and learning and being a part of each other's communities, and not just with one-off projects, but instead with this long, sustained relationship. Well, that sounds really great. It's terrific. Um, well, I just wanted to close it up here and say thank you to Rilini and Joseph for spending time with us talking about her research and teaching and talking about the new Center for Communication Difference and Equity. Um, the launch for that center is, is, is coming up here in late May. May 27th through the 29th. Should I tell you about some of the events that we have? Sure. So on May 27th, our uh, kickoff is down at the Rainer Vista Boys and Girls Club. Mm. We are having a cross-cultural communication workshop that will be at 6 p.m. And so we're, we're dedicated to, to um, our investment in community. So it was really important that we have one of our kickoff events right there in the community. Um, on the 28th, we have a couple of events. One um, special one is the, the undergraduate group, the Minority Leaders of Communication, are hosting a forum on the popular television show Empire to think about the power of mm. those representations. And then our big day is on Friday, May 29th. We have an all-day conference. Um, we have in the morning, uh, our keynote lecture is from Professor Herman Gray, who will be visiting us from um, University of California at Santa Cruz and um, is a phenomenal scholar on um, race and representation and really kind of works with this idea of difference. I think it's going to be wonderful. Also that day, we're going to have a staged reading from um, Professor of African African American Studies, Lisa Thompson, um, from UT Austin, and she'll be doing a staged reading of her play, The Momologues. Mm. And that afternoon, we have a number of uh, faculty panels, uh, not only with our faculty from around the university, our affiliated faculty in the CCDE, but we're also uh, able to bring back a couple of our PhD alums, which is really exciting. Um, uh, Manushka Celeste, who is a professor at UNLV, um, in teaching in African American studies. She will be, uh, she's the one who is leading a panel that's called Is Equity a Scholarly Responsibility, mm -hmm. which should be wonderful. And our second PhD alum is um, uh, Madhavi Murthy, who is teaching in feminist studies at UC Santa Cruz, and she is going to be leading a panel on difference and the key word of difference and what that means. Mm -hmm. So it'll be a full day of exciting um, events, a th three full days of, uh, of wonderful um, celebration activities, and I hope that lots of people will be able to come. Is it open generally to people to come? It is absolutely open for people to come. Um, however, there's, some, there's an Eventbrite RS some of those events are, are filling up very quickly. Mm. We do have lots of room, uh, we're hoping, in, um, in the hub for the keynote address. So that's, that's one that I would really encourage people to come to. Well, it sounds like you're just doing a lot of stuff already. 
Yeah. Is there a place where people could come to to gain information about this, find out about past work, uh, new things that are upcoming? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I would encourage people to go to our website, which is ccde.com.washington.edu. Hmm. And there people can see some highlights of our past events. For example, in November, we did a forum um, that was called From Rodney King to Michael Brown. Hmm. There are some wonderful moments on there that are captured. Uh, in January, we hosted a teach-in that will be an annual event. We'll have another teach-in mm -hmm. in January um, that happens the Friday of, of, of MLK Week, and that was called Ferguson and Beyond. And so there's some, some opportunities for people to see what we've done in the past, and also uh, to follow different um, the Twitter feed and see on our calendar all the upcoming events, because we have many things that will be um, coming up and opportunities for people to engage. And probably the research projects that students will be doing might get posted on there over time too, right? Absolutely. Our summer students, our summer CCDE fellows, will actually be doing some blogs um, mm. in combination with their teen mentees at the Rainer Vista Boys and Girls Club. And those will also be housed at the website. So lots of work to, to check out. Okay. Um, well, that's terrific. And I want to wrap it up here and say thank you for joining us with one of these communication chair chats. I'm David Donkey. I'm chair of the Department of Communication. Working with colleagues such as Relina and on a center such as this is part of, the, part of the privilege and joy of my position. So thank you for joining us today and learning a little bit more about the department and the university. Thank you. Good day.